Hello guys, Zach here once again, and today I've got another random map game. Hmm, surprise, surprise. So, who have we got playing today? Well, down to the bottom right of the map in green, we have El Clan Chris playing as Exotic Infrared. Uh, I don't really know where that name came from, but uh, this is indeed El Clan Chris. He is playing as Aztecs in green down to the bottom right of the map. Over to the left hand side, uh, I suppose you could say the left hand side, uh, is Ivanov. Uh, don't know really who he is, he's, uh, his name is actually Fantasy or Fantasia, I think, no, Fantasia. Um, he's playing as Huns off to the left hand side of the map and I got this game from AOC Box which is uh, Cision's website as you know and he has a lot of very good recordings on there so as usual the link will be in the description to AOC Box where you can go and find some awesome recordings for yourself to go and look at. This is the Arabia map and I am as usual going to speed things up through the Dark Age as uh, this is pretty standard I do believe. I've not actually watched this recording back just yet, uh, and, well this is the first time I've watched it back um, and I know it's going to be a good one, I'm sure of it as it's from AOC Zone as usual. Um, Chris's gold is at the back of his map and uh, he's got a little bit of gold over to the left, two gold piles very close together. This is an important area of the map for Chris um, because obviously once his uh, back gold is depleted, he will have to go here to mine gold. So uh, that is for sure. And red map front gold as well actually uh, but his main gold is at the front also so that's a little bit awkward for him and maybe indicating to us that he will want to get aggressive pretty early on as uh, having forward gold uh, in a 1v1 is good means to get aggressive early on because you want to protect that gold where you can and of course it's kind of on a hill as well the graphic looks a little bit bugged there it's kind of funny actually um, but nevertheless a pretty standard start from both these guys. Aztecs, of course, we know have some very common strategies. Uh, one of those is indeed to wall yourself off and go for a fast Imperial and uh, then spam elite Eagle Warriors at your opponent, which is obviously very feasible to do, uh, though that is not what is going to happen today because I already have a kind of idea what is going to happen as I read the brief for this game. Uh, six villagers gathering wood and up to the feudal age for both these guys I do believe pretty neck and neck I've got to say it right now. Infrared uh, which is actually Chris, sorry I'll, I'll say Chris so you don't get confused. Uh, Chris is on the way up to the feudal age and oh interesting red is actually forwarded forwarded Chris and Chris is going bl market blacksmith so he is going to go fast castle and uh, we'll have to see what strategy he goes for. Blue, uh, red has come forward on the other hand, that is definitely not blue, uh, with a, uh, a barracks right there and an archery range so red is going to flush and he's forwarded so uh, we could see some pressure coming in from red very soon as I say he's got forward gold so it's a very good reason for him to get aggressive early on let's see what he's making I imagine he'll be getting some skirmishes and archers how many has he got to gold only three to gold at the moment so it's going to be a little while before we see a lot of archers coming out and uh, of course red even bringing villagers forwards to build a tower right here this is going to get messy it looks like to me as as uh, Chris is going to have to deal with a tower right here, as well as a kind of semi drush and, of course, uh, more units coming in. This is very, very aggressive from Red right here, bringing his villagers into the mix as well, trying to find a better spot to put his. Uh, watchtower in as he realizes that one wasn't such a good spot um, of course Chris forced to run away from this uh, this wood camp here as red even comes in with villagers to try and take him out building a watchtower on his gold and that's quite a lot of gold clutches you have there Chris Chris is on the way up to the castle age and it doesn't look like he's actually gonna make any feudal age units whatsoever just yet he is gonna be like what uh, yeah it's like Wow, he's got nothing at the moment uh, to actually combat what Red is bringing in. And uh, Red is going to look to stay aggressive by the by the uh, way things are going. This uh, archery range, let's see if it's still producing anything. Yep, Arch is even coming out for Red right now. And I imagine Fletching will be on the way pretty shortly. This watchtower though, just uh, to protect his gold for the time being. And uh, I know exactly why, uh, though I'm not going to tell you exactly why just yet. Because I don't want to spoil all the fun. As uh, Chris is nearly at the castle age right now, he's got just a little bit of uh, wood, just a little bit of food, and uh, a, a wee bit of gold as well. Continuing to keep these villagers inside of this watchtower to make sure that uh, his gold is kept safe. 
Red's still getting really aggressive. His villagers right into the fray uh, to kill off as many of Chris's villagers as he can. Chris trying to bank some food quickly uh, as he is running very low on food. Red with another archery range just outside and Chris still with no military production buildings. He doesn't even have a barracks yet but what is this? It's uh, two monasteries. Uh, pretty nice one from Chris. He's got a lot of gold right here and if he can protect his gold and make some monks then it's very likely that he's going to be able to get some conversions. Let's see exactly how well he does here. He's already into the castle age. He could of course get some elite eagle warriors out if he wants to. Uh, sorry not elite eagle warriors, just normal eagle warriors. But no, he's deciding to make monks instead. And let's see if he can actually hold this off because it's going to be pretty challenging as Red does have quite a lot of units already. He has got the second archery range up just outside of his down and he will be continuing to keep the pressure on he looks to me like he's not even actually that concerned about going up to the castle age just yet a little bit of a misclick there building a barracks instead of a farm i just noticed and a tower trying to get over this gold it's going to be really important for red to take this gold by the looks of it but um let's just get my uh, view up for Chris buying another watchtower here. He's pretty much bought this watchtower with the market. He had to buy um, buy stone for this, and he has bought that. If he gets two watchtowers up, then his gold will be safe. Out comes two monks, and he may just be able to get a couple of converts here, which could be very nice. There's a convert on an archer right there. I can't see what else he's managed to convert just yet. It looks like just one archer has been converted. Maybe he's going to convert a villager. Uh, maybe that is what he did convert. Nope, he's actually converted two archers right now, and uh, red is up with a little bit of a tough tough uh tough match it looks like uh, chris is gonna just continue to make monks perhaps although he's not actually making anything right now but he is gonna take this watchtower out with his villagers and he is gonna protect his gold of course he wants to protect gold if he's gonna make a lot of monks and it does seem that way Chris doing a great job here, just defending, and Red not really able to do anything because, believe it or not, Chris isn't even making villagers right now. He's got no food income whatsoever. He's not collecting food from anywhere. He could perhaps go to these berry bushes here to collect some, but he's not even creating villagers right now. All of his economy is focused on gold, and it looks like it's going to stay that way for a little while as he creates more and more monks. Looked like he even got a uh, convert on that villager right there. But Red does have quite a lot of uh, archers and skirmishers around his town. We'll have to see how much he's going to make and if he does decide to go up to the castle edge pretty soon Which um, could be a possibility as he is starting to sow a few more farms right now or seed a few more farms However, you want to say that uh, it could be a possibility going to be very hard for Chris now though as he really does have no food whatsoever he's going to need more wood of course to make more houses and uh, that is exactly what he's doing back here. It's so important for him to keep this gold safe if he's going to continue with this strategy and he is looking to me like he's going to commit to it bringing the monks over now and he may be able to get a few more converts here and turn Fantasia's army against him. Let's just have a look. What is he going to do? Is he going to get any converts? He's de definitely going to get one convert. He may even get two here losing one monk unfortunately um, and unfortunately though you've got to bear in mind Chris is going to have to micro these monks very well because feudal age units are very cheap to create uh, skirmishes are especially very cheap to create so I imagine he's going to try and convert the archers over the skirmishes that would make sense as they do cost more gold but it's not like he's converting knights or anything. Knights are worth converting because they're expensive. And even if you lose your monk and manage to convert one knight, it still works in your favour. But these uh, skirmishes and archers are pretty cheap to build. Only 45 gold, of course. And uh, that's 100 gold for a monk. So he really needs to uh, keep his monks as safe as possible. Unfortunately, just losing that one there. Couldn't get it in the town centre in time. In fact, he may even lose another. This is not good for Chris at all. But he is still managing to make a few conversions getting a conversion on this skirmisher here and it doesn't look to me like he's getting ready to produce any more military of other sorts at all getting further right there and I've got to be honest with you I'm not actually 100% familiar with the monastery technologies because we don't see it very often at all further monks move 15% faster I imagine he's already got sanctity which give them extra hit points uh, there we go 50% more hit points hit points which of course is going to be extremely important as uh, keeping these guys alive is his utmost priority against this army. 
Let's see if he can get any more converts. He's actually starting to get a little bit of army himself, but bear in mind, he's not created any villagers for quite a long while now. Uh, no villagers are being created at all. A third monastery going up, and look how many monks he's got queued up. Sanctity just being researched to give him that all-important extra HP, and uh, it's just now a matter of time, because bear in mind as well, uh, Aztec monks do get an extra 5 HP for every researched, uh, research researched at the monastery, and uh, continuing to pump these guys out. Let's see how many more converts he can get. It's going to be so important that he gets as many as he possibly can. No faith left on these monks. Going to get them back in the town centre to heal a little bit. This one here is going to be able to get one conversion. Maybe. Nope. Not enough time. Oh man. He's got to be really careful with these guys. It's going to be so important to micro them and keep them away from harm. Uh, but more monks coming out. Sanctity just about to finish up. We'll see these uh, monks do get a little boost in hit points there. Just a little bit. Uh, another 20 HP added on. And, uh, and now, uh, you know could be very possible that Chris could turn this around with the amount of monks he is getting. There is four monks right there. Bear in mind they have got nine range, so they do outrange these guys very, very rapidly. But Chris still losing a few monks, unfortunately. Still not managing to get any conversions yet. Let's see. One, two, two skirmishes converted. But he's going to want to convert the gold unit. So I'm throwing away monks just to convert a couple of archers and skirmishes really isn't enough. But he is managing to get enough converts to push red away. And it's only a matter of time until he whittles him down and has very little left. He's still not producing villages at the town center. He has no um, food whatsoever. And it looks to me like red is going to be up to the castle age fairly soon as he does have nearly the required resources to do so lots of farms coming out and uh, Red, of course, as Huns, is going to want to get out some light cavalry to combat these monks. Meanwhile, though, at uh, Chris's base, he's doing a good job of holding them off. The monks are still getting the converts, and the more units he manages to convert, the harder it is for those units to actually kill him off, because they are going to have to get through the converted units first before they can actually reach the monks and get in range of them. And so... You know, this is looking pretty good for Chris, I've got to say. Pretty interesting strategy. More monks being created constantly and moving over the map as well with these monks. He is losing these guys, though. Um, unfortunately, his wallalos aren't, uh, aren't being heard enough and not managing to get enough converts. They wasted two monks there, unfortunately, for him. And for the time being, he's just doing absolutely fine, managing to get a few more villagers out at last and continuing to move across to uh, Red's base. You've got to bear in mind, monks do move very slowly. And even using Red's archers that he converted against him in this little battle over here to probably kill off some villagers or at least try and get some scouting. I don't know how much he's already scouted. Wow, his scouting is excellent. I've got to say, Chris, well done, Chris, for your scouting there. Really great work. And Red is still continuing to come in from the sides, but Chris is still pumping out those monks, and he's still going to get those all-important converts. It's going to be, um, let's see how many he's actually got. He's got 11 monks on the field right now, and he's managed to convert 10 of his enemy units. He's going to have to get a little bit of a higher monk to conversion ratio. And Red is now into the Castle Age, making scout cavalry, of course. He's not going to go and make knights. Oh, no, he's not into the Castle Age. He's upping to the Castle Age. But, of course, he's not going to make knights because... That would be a pretty silly idea as they get converted a lot e more easily than the light cavalry do. And now we're going to see a few more light cavalry, well, scout cavalry coming out. I imagine they'll be upgraded to light cavalry once uh, Fantasia upgrades to the castle age. And Chris is pushing out. He's maintained the score lead this whole time. He's still only on one town centre. Finally starting to get some villagers on to other areas, it looks like. Trying to get a bit more wood, perhaps, and perhaps a few more uh, villagers would help as well. But his population doing pretty well, continuing to pump out those monks as ever. And can pretty much deal with whatever Red has to throw at him. Now is the hard time to deal with because the Scout Cavalry are coming in. And uh, although he's going to be able to get a couple of conversions here, his Monk Micro is going to be so important as the Scout Cavalry will get in close and pick them off. Of course, Scout Cavalries are very cheap to make. And that does mean that the cost of a Scout Cavalry vastly uh, is, is much less sorry, than the cost of a Monk. So he needs to get more than one convert per Monk here. Continuing to push out, and uh, it looks like Fantasia here is going to have a pretty hard time as these monks are rolling up to his front gates. If he converts some of these villagers, it's going to really impact uh, Fantasia's economy. Remember, not only are they just converting, but he gets to com keep, keep the converted unit. Out comes more scout cavalry to try and attack the monks quickly. Um, obviously, 
scout cavalry are really quick, so they can get into the monks' uh, monks' uh, faces, if you like, and kill them off. But managing to convert two right there, his uh, his control of his monks absolutely excellent. He is losing a couple, unfortunately, but as you can see, they've now got 60 HP due to having an extra research done, and uh, they are going to man manage to continue to get these conversions completed. Doesn't look like Red is going to be able to actually hold this off, which is which is something quite impressive, I've got to say. Um, you know. He's just massing the monks and rolling on in. And uh, this is absolutely excellent play from him. He's actually just here converting the stables. This is a really nice technology to upgrade so you can actually convert buildings. And he is going to convert these stables. And as the scout cavalry come out, they of course are going to get converted as well. If he can convert this stable, well he's already converted this one. Excellent work. He's actually converted both of these stables now and wow red is actually really gonna struggle to hold this off He's got no military production buildings all of a sudden other than the two at his base But of course he's gonna come convert those as well He's already converted the archery range and the barracks red is just being whittled down one one building at a time I suppose you could say as he is slowly just taking control of all of his buildings and everything it's like uh, oh, I don't even know what to compare it to it's just just awesome and uh, suddenly Chris has got this huge whopping army and uh, red has got absolutely nothing uh, to combat this if we look at their population 62 for Chris and only 31 for Fantasia where has it gone wrong well he just did not do enough to combat these monks and Chris rolling on in, just converting absolutely everything. Looks like he's even going to convert this blacksmith right now. So even walling Red in with his own buildings, that is that is something, isn't it? This blacksmith about to change hands in just a second, it seems. And I, I, there's very little Red can actually do here. There is very little he can do. As uh, Chris converts that blacksmith also. And this stable going up, but how long is that going to last? Because, I mean... Oh god, he's not. He's got a little bit of food. He can continue to make some uh, scout cavalry, but of course, where's the wood to make another stable? He hasn't got it. He's continuing to make. Oh no, he's not even making villages right now. And uh, Chris is moving on in around the side. If he converts this stable, then what is Red gonna do? Uh, Chris has already got enough monks here to convert anything that comes out of this stable. He's gonna need at least. Uh, well, how many monks does uh, Chris have? He has, uh, what's that, 9, 10, 11 monks right there. He's going to need at least 11 scout cavalry. And, of course, Chris is just going to go and try and convert this stable again, because why not? Red going to try and take out everything that Chris brings into his base, but I don't think it's going to happen. He's going to be able to convert this monk right here. Not this monk. He's going to be able to convert the scout cavalry right here. Um, this one's going to die, and this one is now going to be whittled away as another monk can just come in from behind and continue the conversion. Converting his villagers away from him. Converting absolutely everything. Is he going to convert the mill just for, like, you know, rub it in his face? Convert the mill as well while you're there. Um, I imagine he's going to go and try and convert this stable again, but there, I think this really is very little that Red can actually actually do here I mean he's got absolutely nothing left he's got very few buildings um, Chris has got a lot of monks in reserve he's even got a siege workshop up right now so he can just build a couple of mangonels or a battering ram to deal with this town center and just literally going around converting everything in sight what a great strategy and um, something a little bit different as well I always say I'm a big fan of monks myself and uh, absolutely great execution from Chris in this sense Red just giving up right now saying GG and uh, it's only a matter of seconds before he resigns there we go and uh, what a great game uh, I was really impressed with when I read the description to this one and Chris hasn't failed us he's given us a great game today and uh, yeah, monks, guys, monks, they are so cool. And in fact, I'm even tempted to go and try this tactic out tonight and uh, see how I do with it. Probably not very well, as I, I'm pretty noob. Um, but nevertheless, always fun to watch uh, a lot of monks rolling in and just converting everything. So, as usual, guys, thank you very much for watching. I have been Zach, and I will see you next time.